One thing new players don't really notice about Realm, and probably won't until they're told about it, is that she has the best magic stat in the entire game! That's right! A little ten-year-old is more proficient at magic than a half-esper like Terra, or an, an infused imperial general like Celeste. There's a good reason why she was given that insane native magic stat, however. Of all the characters that can equip espers, she has the lowest esper time in the game. This is due to her being recruited near the end of the penultimate dungeon in the world of balance, and then it takes a while to get her back in the world of ruin. As far as equipment goes, she's very similar to Strago, except she can also equip brushes. That are completely obsolete by rods anyway, so stick with that. This includes the angel brush found in the dragon's den. While it does provide a nice speed boost, as well as a chance to confuse with her physical, should you ever want to try that, don't know why you would, the magus rod has a hefty magic evasion boost, so it's best to go with that instead. In the helm department, Realm is notable in that she's the only user of the cat ear hood, which used to be the best helm in the game before the Game Boy Advance version introduced Gao's dueling mask. Oddly enough, the cat ear hood isn't so good because it doubles the money you get from winning battles, but because on top of that, it also has the best stats! Well, at least you have a good reason to use Realm if you're desperate for money. She also has access to Strago's suit, so just like him, the Behemoth suit is your best bet. One thing to keep in mind about Realm is that magic is all she has. So if you want to use Realm at all, and you'll be forced to with those multi-party dungeons, you will have to keep her magic up to date throughout the game. This is especially important when you first get her near the end of the World of Balance, since at that point, she has her weak physical, sketch, and not a single magic spell. Bios learned really quick, so you can get started with that. Then when it's learned, you can transition into the Aura spells, and maybe white magic afterwards. Later on, inside Daryl's tomb, there's a well-hidden armor that's exclusive to Realm, which is the Regal Gown. It's not worth it. The only thing you want to do with it is bet it at the Coliseum in exchange for a Minerva Bustier, which Terra and Celeste will love you for. You'll also want to drop by the Coliseum to snag a Cat Ear Hood and a second Magus Rod for Realm by betting an Impartisan and a Healing Rod. In the end, overall, Realm is a character that should appeal to those looking for a powerful magic user, because even though every character but one can use magic, Realm does it better than most. Unfortunately, that abysmal Esper time really handicaps her compared to the likes of Terra or Celeste, but if you don't mind that, she can still be a nice asset for your team. Okay. You've probably been waiting this whole time for me to tear into and absolutely demolish a really, really crappy character. And so far, you're probably disappointed. Most of the characters I've covered so far, while maybe not the best ever, at least have some interesting niches. The closest we've been to a really bad character was Cyan, who's somewhat salvaged by Quick. But more importantly, is a game-breaker compared to what I'm getting into. The time is now, folks. We're getting to Umaro, the biggest pile of garbage in the game. Fourteen playable characters in this game is a lot. And if they wanted to cut into the fat, they would have started with this guy. Make no mistake, Umaro sucks. He sucks so badly that he looks like the team that plays against the Harlem Globetrotters. He's the only character in the game that's absolutely unable to, be to benefit the party in a standout way. Why is that? Well, for starters, he's uncontrollable. I know, this doesn't mean much. Gao's uncontrollable and he's by far and away the best character in the game. But that's because of the perks of the Rage Command. Umaro doesn't have that. He just uses a select few attacks and none of them really do all that much. He's got his regular attack like everyone else. He's got a move called Tackle, which does the same thing, except it ignores defense and evasion. And then he's got a few other moves that require relic slots to even use. There's Toss, which actually looks pretty funny, where Umaro throws a fellow party member into a monster for moderate damage. 
and Snowstorm, a multi-target ice attack that's really not worth the relic slot. And this is all Umaro can do. The best he can do is moderate damage to one target, and he's far from guaranteed to even do that every turn. Did Square even playtest this piece of shit before putting the game out? In what way did they think he could add to the game? Maybe, just maybe, they figured that his monstrous base stats would keep him afloat. But this guy is like the slacking of Final Fantasy VI. Ridiculous stats, and yet he sucks so badly. There are more than a few problems that, put together, really look like Truant, except possibly even worse. First, he can't equip Espers. Even though he's not meant to use magic, he can't even use them for stat boosts. Though, to be fair, given the nature of the damage formula, even if he could rack up those strength boosts, it wouldn't put him on par with the rest of the group. But you can't equip him however you like, either. You can't take the equipment he comes with, which includes a snow scarf, no less. Not even with that guy on the airship who takes away everyone's equipment. He can't have a shield, he can't have a helm. I guess this makes sense, because he's a yeti, and do you see a yeti using a shield and a helm? I guess they tried to compensate by giving him insane natural defenses, but that's still not quite enough. But the worst part is, as I said, that none of his moves deal anything past moderate damage, and those which do require relic slots. Unlike other characters who can use relic slots to enhance already great damage, Umaro needs them to not do insignificant damage, and the boost is just not worth it. Afterwards, Square realized they fucked up royally, and when the time came to make things right, they tried. They tried really hard, with a Dragon's Den relic, since of course Umaro can't equip weapons other than the Bone Club he comes with. And said relic, the Bone Wrist, is the most game-breaking thing you can possibly imagine. Let's go over what it does, okay? Plus 5 to Strength, plus 5 to Speed, plus 5 to Stamina, plus 5 to Magic, plus 10 to Defense, plus 10 to Evasion, plus 10 to Magic Defense, plus 10 to Magic Evasion, grants perfect hit rate, plus 25% to all damage, plus 50% to max HP, plus 50% to Strength. That's a long list of hefty boosts, right? If that's not an admission of guilt, I don't know what is. And you know what? You want to know what? It's still nowhere near enough! It's not enough to justify using a badly broken character, despite all those boosts that would make even a scion without quick into the only character you'd ever want to use. Of course, the fact that the bone wrist is found in a post-game dungeon doesn't help his cause. But even at... Even after getting it, he still gets curb stomped like no tomorrow by the rabid beasties in there. Make no mistake, Umaro is the worst character in the game, in a landslide. And you should only recruit him for completion and stick him in the airship for the rest of his life. Moving on from a character that can literally do nothing to a character that can literally do everything. Meet our final character, Gogo! For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to refer to Gogo as a he, even though we have no idea which gender he is. Some fans like to speculate that he's Sedzer's long-lost lover, and I'm not making that up either, but there's no solid evidence either way. Anyway, Gogo's special ability, Mimic, is as straightforward as it gets. You mimic the last action taken by your team. Whether you want to use an ability slot on Mimic depends on what you expect to do out of it, but my favorite application is mimicking Esper summons. You know how you can only summon an Esper once per battle? Well, Mimic bypasses that entirely. It's especially useful when using the Ragnarok Esper for morphing enemies into items. The success rate is typically very, very low, so instead of having to win the battle and find another, another enemy of the same kind every time you fail, you can just have the rest of your party do nothing and let Gogo spam Mimic until you get your item. Of course, this is mostly for Game Boy Advance players, because anyone else would be crazy to even possess that Esper to begin with. But Gogo's trademark isn't the Mimic command, but rather the fact that if you actually pay attention to his status screen, he can use any of your fellow party members' special abilities. 
Want another Phantom Rush user? Gogo's there. Need a second Rafflesia Rage spammer for those multi-party dungeons? Gogo's your man. Need extra help stealing items? Pair Gogo and Lock together and steal the night away. Of course, the one thing Gogo can't mimic is Terra's Esper blood, and so he can't use trance and have a sex change in the process should he actually be male. However, you can use Mug, Gill Toss, and Control by equipping Steel, Slots, and Sketch respectively, as well as the corresponding Relic. One more restriction. If you killed off Shadow on the floating continent, Go-Go can't use Throw. Too bad. The way the game determines which attacks you can use in some skill sets, such as Blitz, depends on what the signature user of the skill set can use. For example, Gogo will know all the Blitzes Sabin knows, he can use all the Bushidos Cyan can use, and so on. Since Gogo can't equip Espers to learn magic, the way the magic command works is more peculiar. He can use the spells the other characters that are in your party at the time can use. This means that, theoretically, Gogo can forget spells if you shuffle your party members around, interestingly enough. If Umaro is the slacking of Final Fantasy VI, then Gogo is its Smeargle. Not only because of their incredible versatility, but because of the atrocious stats. Yep, versatility comes at a high price, and to make it worse, he can't equip Espers, so he's stuck with those stats. This effectively cripples Gogo severely, because Sabin is downright better at blitzes, Shadow deals more damage with the stuff he throws, etc. But wait! It gets worse! His equipment options are also arguably the worst in the game, Umaro notwithstanding, of course. His best armor can be bought in a store. Let that sink in for a second. His best armor is so crappy, it's store-bought. He doesn't have heavy armor, no Minerva bustier, no snow scarf, none of Strago's and Realm suits, not even the crappy red jacket that serves as Sabin's best armor. No, it's even worse than that! Weapon-wise, Gogo's not so hot either, since he doesn't get anything better than the Magus Rod. Sure, it's also the best weapon for Strago and Realm, but it's a dedicated mage weapon, not something you can really use for physical damage. Especially not with that awful strength. As for the Scorpion's Tail, which he gets from the Dragon's Den, it's decent, but still not quite as good as the Magus Rod. So you might be thinking of using that Merit Award on Gogo since his, his equipment is an absolute farce. But not only could you potentially use a much better relic with that slot, but Gogo -Go got the Merit Award taken away from him in non-SNES versions, since he can use the same Wind God build as Gao, though less effectively. So, unless you're an SNES player, you're stuck with not just the bad stats, but the terrible equipment options too. Gogo's only appeal is his access to every special skill in the game. And even there, the fact that he will always attack off an insignificant stat means he's just... Uh, stuck as a purely a support character. Fortunately, there's one command that just screams support, and that's Rage. Gogo -Go is every bit as good as Gao at much of the stuff that Rage accomplishes. All those cool defensive Rages are a natural fit on Gogo. -Go. Not to mention the fact that you get a second Rafflesia spammer for these multi-party dungeons. Let me be clear. If you want to get through the Dragon's Den with a minimum of ouchies, you will want to cheese Rage as much as possible. And doing so in two parties instead of one improves your chances of survival tremendously. This alone carries Gogo -Go from a bottom tier piece of shit to a sought after character. Heck, the fact that Gogo -Go can actually use a weapon makes Gogo -Go a potentially better Stray Cat user than Gao. And this concludes my analysis of all things Final Fantasy VI. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe even learned something from it. Who knows? Maybe you're itching to pick up the game again? If so, I'm not holding you anymore. Good luck!